Hi, do you hear me well? And yes, okay, perfect. So Marco is at uh, IFIS, the um, at, which is an interdisciplinary uh -huh. center for complexity and uh, physics, and he'll be talking about uh, collision models and. Uh, Yes. Please stop. Okay, thanks. Hi, everybody, and thanks to the organizer for giving me the opportunity of uh, presenting this work. And uh, you see the, the title of my talk is quite explanatory. Collision models can efficiently simulate any multipartite Markovian quantum dynamics. And now I will explain you why. So what is the idea of a collision model? Well, basically you have uh, an open system, an open quantum system, this red circle here, described by the state ROS, and uh, it's evolving following uh, a standard open dynamics driven by the Ldvillian superoperator like this. So you see we are focusing on Markovian dynamics in this talk. And uh, instead of describing the environment as the standard set of non-interacting infinite number of modes, we want to describe it through a collision approach. That is to say, uh, we describe uh, uh, the environment as a set of ancillas hitting against uh, our system, our open system here, the red circle. And then, for instance, for instance, one ancilla hits the, the system and goes away, and then another one comes in, collides with the system and goes away, and so on and so forth. And if you do, see, if you do this, uh, you can see that you recover uh, an open dynamics described by, by a master equation. And collision models are uh, very important in the field of uh, quantum thermodynamics. And I think that most of you are already familiar with these papers. So the idea is that in a collision model, you're really uh, describing uh, the, the elementary interaction between the environment and the system during a single time step delta t during the single collision time. So uh, let's say that you're really getting to the fine grained description of what is going on between system and environment. And for instance, um, following this approach, uh, you, can, you can describe the elementary exchange of uh, uh, entropy, information, energy, so you can calculate heat, work, and so on. And let's go to a more formal description uh, of a collision model. So you see, we want to describe this collision here uh, occurring during a time step of delta t. So there is the ancilla hitting against the system, and we can uh, we can describe it uh, through this unitary operator here, driven by a, a standard interaction Hamiltonian with a certain coupling energy gi, and then we also allow the system to perform uh, a, a free system uh, evolution in the sense that. Uh, you can, uh, you, you, the system can evolve uh, without any ancilla involved here. Uh, and this is unitary. And then you just compose the two different evolutions in a single overall evolution. And the idea of the collision model is exactly to build this quantum map describing a single st time step of the collision. And uh, this is nothing but the evolution of the initial state of the system and a certain initialized state of the ancilla driven by our unitary evolu evolution here, and then you trace away the degrees of freedom of the ancilla. Um, what is the good thing of all this description here? Well, the point is that if you take, uh, you see this limit here of, uh, of uh, infinitesimal time step, uh, you can expand each unitary operator like this, okay? And so you can put these unitary operators here in the in, in your quantum map of the collision model, and you're just and then you neglect higher order terms. You you just keep the 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 lower order terms that you want. And the point is that the application of a quantum map to the state of the system, of a quantum map of a collision model, gives you the state of the system at time t plus delta t. But then in the in the limit of a time step very very small you can build this ratio and this is nothing but the standard master equation, the Markovian master equation we are interested in. And then if you want to recover the, the, the dynamics of the overall quantum dynamical semigroup at any time t, you just have to apply the quantum map n times where n is given by the ratio between t and delta t. 
Okay, so this is the, the, the interesting approach um, uh, of the collision model. And this description can be found, for instance, in this paper here and also in our preprint. And now in my talk and in our work, we are interested in multipartite open quantum systems. That is to say, quantum systems made of several subsystems. For instance, take this network, you see, uh, this is made of uh, five uh, nice green balls and uh, each of them uh, is a quantum subsystem. And we want to consider the whole network as our open quantum system. And the point is that we want to describe the, the dynamics of the network of the system by means of a, of a collision model. And the collision model, you see, uh, has these uh, ancillas. And the, the key point here is that we want a description in which you recover the elementary interaction between ancilla and subsystem. That is to say, you see here, we do not want, we do not want the, the ancilla to interact with the system as a whole, but we really want to describe each elementary interaction between ancilla and subsystem. And uh, in the literature, you can find uh, many, many papers addressing similar scenarios. I think the, the most famous one is this one by Giovannetti and Palma. But the point is that there is not, let's say, a general recipe uh, connecting uh, the most general um, multipartite open system dynamics and the collision model and uh, a, a certain description through collision models. For instance, in this paper, they consider quantum cascade models. Here, they consider only local interactions to study non-Marcoianity. Here, and also here, they consider entangled ancillas. Uh, for instance, uh, this Gabriele De Chiara gave us yesterday a very nice talk about this. Uh, but still, you can see that this approach is, is not general in the sense that does not provide us with the, the most general uh, open system dynamics. So our aim in this talk is exactly to describe the most general uh, multipartite open quantum system dynamics by means of a collision model. And to do so, we have to introduce the most general master equation of uh, such a dynamics that is the most general GKLS master equation um, because we focus on Markovian dynamics. And you see that this is driven by a standard system Hamiltonian HS and then we have the dissipative part. And here for simplicity, I'm taking local jump operators in the sense that the jump operators here of the master equation are acting locally on the subsystem M here and M prime here. Uh, okay, so we have a system uh, divided into many subsystems and we are just selecting one of them. And then we just sum over all the possible subsystems here in the master equation. And our goal is to derive a certain uh, quantum map describing a collision model, but in the limit of, in, of a small time step uh, provides us with a, with a master equation. And just to say, uh, I'm assuming the locality of the jump operators, but our, our collision model is not restricted to it. So, this is really valid for many body jump operators also. That is to say, this is really the most general um, GKLS master equation for multipartite open quantum systems. And now I will present the steps of the protocol to, to achieve this. So uh, the idea is that uh, you, you have to select a certain pair of jump operators here in the master equation. Uh, for instance, here in the example, uh, I want to simulate the term in the master equation connecting a, a certain jump operator of the subsystem one and another one of subsystem two. And you have to take one ancilla for each pair of jump operators here in the master equation. And this might look really, let's say, redundant, but it's just to describe the general case of when there are many short, shortcuts that you can implement. And uh, this is not always necessary. And then what you have to do is to build this elementary interaction here that is given by this formula. So you see it's a standard two body interaction between the ancilla that is a qubit and the, the subsystem. 
driven by this Hamiltonian. And here we have the jump operator we want to simulate and the ancilla. Um, and then you have to implement it in this fashion that is called the second order Suzuki trotter decomposition. So you have to do this. You implement the, the interaction between subsistence two and ancilla lasting for a time step delta t l, and then you implement the other interaction, the other elementary interaction of the other jump operator between ancilla and subsystem one, lasting for delta t, and then you go back and uh, you do again this elementary interaction between a subsystem two and ancilla, lasting for delta t l. Then you just do this for all the possible uh, ancillas, that is to say for all the possible pairs of uh, jump operators in the master equation, and you compose them like this. So you're just bunching together all the, all the collisions to create all the possible terms of a master equation. Then you can add the free system Hamiltonian, as I explained before, and you get this overall unitary operator. You initialize uh, the environment qubits, each ancilla is a qubit in a thermal state or in the ground state as you prefer. The, the important thing is that it must be diagonal in the basis of uh, sigma c. And finally, you build the quantum map like this. Okay, you just uh, you just evolve uh, the state of the system and the initialized state of the, of the ancillas through your unitary operator. And you trace away the degrees of freedom on the ancillas and uh, it can be shown that thanks to the Suzuki trotter decomposition by choosing the proper uh, energy scale, you, you can see that uh, in the limit of a small time step, n applications of this quantum map can describe uh, any possible quantum dynamical semigroup of uh, this multipartite open quantum system. And this, again, this is valid even if these jump operators are not local anymore, even if they are many body. So we really get the most general um, Markovian dynamics of a, of a multipartite open quantum system. And this is the first result of our work. Then we have also estimated an error bound for these simulations in the sense that the, the question is, if I simulate these quantum dynamical semigroups by means of the collision model, which is the error I'm, I'm making here. And uh, you see, you can decompose this error into several uh, errors like this, the global error, that is the most general one. So the error of simulating the, the dynamical semigroups by N applications of the quantum map, single step error, the same, but for a single application, truncation error, collision error. Well, I'm not going into the details here, but the important thing is that it can be shown that the global error scales as time square over n. And it can also be shown that this is optimal for, uh, for collision models. And I want to stress here that what we find in the, in the paper is not just the scaling, it's, it's not just the order. We are really uh, estimating uh, an analytical error bound. That is to say, you find this expression with global error less equal than a certain number. And then depending on the precision you want to get, this number can be cumbersome as you want or simpler. But the important thing is that really, if you want to simulate your, uh, your dynamics up to time t, then you see that uh, you have a, a strict error bound and you're not exceeding it. And finally, final result is that uh, um, uh, we are, uh, we, we have shown that uh, we can uh, uh, we can implement uh, the, the, the quantum algorithm describing our protocol, our uh, our uh, multipartite collision model on a quantum computer, and uh, according to some criteria that you can find in this paper, for instance, it can be shown that it's efficiently simulable, in the sense that uh, it requires a number of ancillas and a number of gates that is a polynomial function of a number of subsystems time and required precision. And these are, let's say, the conditions uh, um, necessary to say that a quantum algorithm is efficiently simulable on a quantum computer. OK, about just two quickly. OK. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Take home message quickly. So what you can find in our preprint here, the description of any multipartite Markovian dynamics 
by means of a multipartite collision model. So really you can describe any global master equation at any temperature. So even composite thermal machines, uh, as Camille was explaining us before, uh, any kind of path really, the most general Markovian dynamics. Then uh, we have also introduced a, a method uh, for uh, estimating an exact error bound. And uh, we have employed it for showing that uh, the error of a multipartite quantum collision model is optimal. And then we have finally proven that uh, it's efficiently simulable on a quantum computer. And indeed, our goal now is to implement this algorithm on the IBM quantum computer. And just quickly, this is the team of the work. So Gabriele De Chiara at Queen's University Belfast, Sabrina Maniscalco, who is professor at University of Turku, now University of Helsinki. Roberta Zambrini who is a senior researcher at IFISC and uh, Gianluca Giorgi who is researcher at IFISC as well and I'm a PhD student of Sabrina and Roberta and that's all thank you very much thanks for a beautiful talk Michael um I'll directly ask there's one question already I'd, I'd ask all other questions to either raise your hand or put them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, so the first question is by Ivan Henao, uh, who asks, who says, thanks for a very nice talk, Marco. Can you please elaborate a bit on why your result applies to global jump operators, even under the assumption that the equation is written with local operators? Uh, OK, let's see. If I go back to my master equation, yeah, here I'm writing down the master equation with local operators, so just for simplicity, because uh, you see, you can visualize it here in a very, with a very simple scheme. Of course, I can write the most general GKLS master equation. So here you, you can have many body jump operators. Uh, and I can still give you a, a description of a, of a quantum collision model reproducing it. And I can still comment, make some comments about the, the, the error estimation and the quantum simulation, the efficient quantum simulation, and they still hold. I mean, the same scaling and the same result about quantum simulation. Uh, the point is just that, uh, okay, I can do it. And of course, once that the jump operators are non-local, uh, then uh, let's say that what I mean by elementary interaction is something that is non-local as well. I mean, I, I assume that my ancilla now is a, uh, if the jump operator is, uh, for instance, a two body in the, in the system, then the ancilla will make an interaction with this free body because the, the elementary interaction there is, you know, it's, it's not two body anymore. And then you can decompose it uh, on a quantum computer by standard mm, methods of uh, decomposition of quantum gates into elementary quantum gates. But more or less, this is uh, the result. Thanks. Um, I don't see any other questions right now. Sorry, Philip. Um, I think Ram wants to ask a question. He just wrote the ah, chat. Please, yes, please. Hi, Felix, and uh, yeah, thank you for this uh, very nice talk. Uh, I, I'm wondering uh, whether you've considered the uh, higher order totalization. Uh, then the number of steps grows linearly, uh, but the error uh, scales differently and favorably. So is there a fundamental yeah. limit in doing it? Or? Uh, no, the point is that uh, if you want to employ higher order totalization, then uh, let's say in the derivation, you, you, you see here, um, well, let me think about it. I mean, my point, I, I, I would answer by now um, that given that in the master equation here, we want to have, let's say, two operators in the sense one for the for instance, one for subsystem one and one for, for subsystem two, then it's we, we must employ the second order trotterization. But this might not be true. I, I would have to think about it. But let's say that if you use, of course, if you use higher order trotterization, then the, the, the error scales in a better way. But, but it's even way more complex to implement that. Because then, uh, let's say you have 
here you just have three two qubit gates and with a higher order totalization when you have to implement really more and more qubit gates and, and, and I think they are the same gates, just in different time splits. But yeah, the same, same gates, gates, but you have to 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 implement them several. Uh, okay, the, the gate is yes, the same, yes, but yes. you have to put, uh, let's say, I think six of them in a different order, right? Yes. So on a quantum computer, this could be very demanding. Yes. Thank you. Mark. You're welcome. Great. Uh, thanks again, Michael.